Now, it is one of the great sites of ancient antiquity, little visited by foreigners and generally overlooked by Western historians. Persopolis was the capital of ancient Persia some two and a half thousand years ago. For the first time, some of its treasures are being loaned to the British Museum, as our arts correspondent Nicholas Glass reports. The ancient Persian capital of Persepolis, and on a sweltering public holiday swarming with young Iranians, there's a curiosity in Iran about their pre-Islamic history. The gold will entrance, as it always does, but more significantly, what this exhibition sets out to do is to lift the Persians from historical obscurity. I call it forgotten because although it hasn't been forgotten in Iran, and that's an important point to stress, it has, I think, been forgotten in the West uh, in comparison with Greece, Rome, Egypt, Babylonia, Assyria. It's very poorly known. Why? And, uh, well, it's a very good question. I think partly because of the uh, fairly hostile press that Iran has, or ancient Persia has re received o over the centuries. We see Persia largely through the eyes of Greek historians. Um, and Greece was at war with Persia, so their accounts on the whole are not very complimentary. John Curtis was our guide in Persepolis earlier this year. To negotiate loans for this exhibition, he's been to Iran four times. Ultimately, the Iranians have been very generous. The almost life-size stone dog, a prize exhibit in the National Museum in Tehran, has come to London, along with some 80 other objects. Gold and silver is kept in the vault in Tehran and is seldom exhibited. They don't have adequate security. But the gold bowl we were shown there is now in a packed glass case at the British Museum. And so too a spectacular gold dagger, its hilt decorated with lion's heads. Strangely enough, one of the most impressive things in this exhibition isn't for real. It's a plaster cast. It's one of the friezes from Persepolis, and it was made by a British Museum expedition in 1892. 113 lucky years later, it's finally been brought out of storage for exhibition. Here's the plaster cast, dramatically lit. And here's the original frieze at Persepolis. John Curtis maintains it's lost much of its definition through erosion over the last century. An Iranian curatorial team flew over to London to help with the show. Here a bronze stand from Persepolis made up of three lions is unpacked. It may well have been used for incense burning. We spoke to the chief curator before she left Tehran. Like John Curtis, she studied the ancient Persians for 30 years. For me, because you know it's a long time that I'm working, and then when I see that, that everybody is interested in this, I feel actually really satisfied, I'm satisfied with that. What do you think about lending to the British Museum particularly? Well, British Museum is uh, one of the museums that we are, we have a long, long relation with. So, oh, I feel happy, that's very nice, it's very nice. A few objects were too heavy or too precious to loan. To be blunt, those that have travel look better exhibited here, control lighting rather than daylight. For the British Museum, there was one last-minute anxiety, the surprise election in June of a new president allegedly unsympathetic to the West. They were very, very enthusiastic and welcoming and cooperative. The only hitch was more recently with the, with the elections and the change of government. Okay, so was there a moment when you thought, well, after all this trouble, we're not going to get it? 
Uh, there certainly was, yes. We were worried that for a time uh, the exhibition wouldn't happen and that we wouldn't receive any objects from Tehran, but happily that uh, wasn't the case. Uh, everybody decided to go ahead with the exhibition. We've now got the full support uh, of the new government and uh, the objects have come and I think it's a wonderful show. In a multi-ethnic empire, the ancient Persians encouraged religious tolerance Nicholas Glass reporting.